Happy Wednesday, Heat Nation. Your boy Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Psych, it's Thursday. Just kidding. I made that mistake yesterday, not doing that again. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Hope you're having a beautiful Thursday. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We got some big stuff happening for you guys. Got some great news for y'all. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, our Miami Heat squad, as of last night, have officially gotten out of the play-in tournament. The Indiana Pacers lose last night to the Brooklyn Nets, which allowed the Miami Heat to move from the seventh to the sixth seed. We are officially half a game above the Indiana Pacers for the sixth seed. We got that battle against them this Sunday. It's like I told y'all, it is super important for the Miami Heat to get that dub against the Indiana Pacers. However, every game is important. Now that you're a half a game above the Indiana Pacers, you need to win these games. You got to beat Philadelphia tonight. You got to beat Houston on Friday. But Sunday is the biggest game left in the regular season for the Miami Heat. Because if you lose to the Indiana Pacers, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's going to be nearly impossible for us to obtain that sixth seed. But I'm proud of the Miami Heat. The fact that we've won three straight games have allowed us to be in this position. But tonight, y'all, we got the Philadelphia 76ers, and it ain't no joke over there. You got guys like Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, Kelly Oubre. No joke. You need to take this game serious. We need all hands on deck. We need Jimmy Butler being in Hemi mode. We need Bam Adebayo to do everything he does to lock down Joel Embiid. We need Duncan to hit his threes. All right, we need Kevin Love to be out there to produce. We need Caleb Martin to be the Swiss Army Knife. We need everyone to step up, Rozier, Jovich, everyone. But a question that I have for you guys today is really for the final spot on the playoff rotation. Because as we know, Eric Spolstra usually likes to go eight to nine man deep in the playoffs. The good thing about this roster, we're a deep team. That's what she said. But still, we're deep. We got a lot of guys that can contribute. We got a lot of guys that can do some damage. But the question is, what's the right rotation? What's the right group of guys to put out there in the NBA playoffs? Now, we're all waiting for the return of Tyler Hero. Now, I mentioned it yesterday. Ira, Wimber, Ira, Ira Winderman did recently say that this Friday will be technically three weeks after the PRP injection. It takes one week to rest, two, week, uh, two weeks to rehab for the PRP injection, which means Tyler Hero should be back at least by Friday or afterwards, which means he may come back next week. Now, there's no official word. You know the Miami Heat keeps everything close to the cup, but we know that when Tyler Hero comes back, We've all discussed this. His best role is to be the sixth man. Now, to answer some questions from fans I had yesterday in the comments, because I saw a lot of fans were in there saying things like, Tyler Hero should be the starter. Duncan Robinson's a role player. Duncan needs to come off the bench. Let me explain this, guys. If you've noticed in years past, where does Duncan Robinson actually fit best? Not coming off the bench, starting next to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. When you start Tyler Hero with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, we've seen that it doesn't work. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, there's one basketball, okay? Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero play the exact same basketball. When they're out there on the floor together, one of them has to sacrifice. However, if you allow Duncan Robinson to start next to Terry Rozier, you're allowing Terry Rozier to be that guy on the offense. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo play um, unselfish basketball. They allowed a player to cook if he's on fire. You saw it in the game against the Knicks. Jimmy allowed Terry to do his thing. What I'm proposing is that the starting lineup we have now, in my opinion, is perfect. Rozier, Duncan, Jimmy, Bam and Jovic. I think that's the perfect starting five moving forward. You got size, you got offensive presence, you got everything you need. Is it the best defensively? No, but you get what you get, okay? Then you get Tyler coming off the bench. Why? Tyler as your sixth man can come off for Terry, can come off for Duncan, can come off for Jimmy. He can come off for multiple players. And when Dun and when Terry, oh, excuse me, when Tyler comes off the bench, who's he playing against? Second unit players. Tyler Hero will bust 
ass against the second unit players in the playoffs. This will allow the Miami Heat to not lose leads or to not get drought out with big with big deficits when Jimmy and Bam go to the bench. That's why I feel Tyler's going to be better. Not only because of that, because he's missed so much time this season. He's missed over 40 games this season. He's not acclimated with Terry Rozier. Duncan is. It's better to bring Tyler off the bench when he comes back. It's always been better for Tyler to come off the bench, in my opinion. Tyler should have taken the Manu Ginobili role. But for a lot of reasons, he didn't. And here we are. It is what it is. I want Tyler Hero back because at the end of the day, this team is better with Tyler Hero. I don't believe, guys, that without Tyler Hero, we're a better team. I understand we went to the NBA Finals last year without him, but what did we not do? Win an NBA championship. Tyler would have been very beneficial in the NBA Finals against the Denver Nuggets. It's just a fact. We were lacking offense. Tyler would have been needed. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I've said this before. You got the five-man starting lineup, which I think is golden. Tyler as your sixth man. Kevin Love as your backup center. I know people have been clamoring for Thomas Bryant lately, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget what Kevin Love brings you. He brings you those outlet passes. He's, an, he's a better offensive player than Thomas Bryant, a better rebounder, and a better defender. I think Kevin Love is the perfect backup center. But I'm glad that Thomas Bryant is stepping up because that's another big body that can help you out. We need that. Then, as your Swiss Army knife off the bench, you have Caleb Martin. So going into the playoffs, that's your power eight-man rotation. You have K Caleb Martin, Kevin Love, and Tyler Hero coming off the bench. Now, who's perfect in the ninth man? Because I've been clamoring for a while, ladies and gentlemen, for Jaime Jaquez Jr. But recently, we've been seeing a resurgence by Haywood Heisman. I don't know if it's because of the lawsuit and he feels like he's got to get that bag so he's busting his ass, but something's been under Haywood Heisman's ass lately, and I'm loving it. Haywood Heisman has more experience than Jaime Jaquez. He's much better defensively. He's a better three-point shooter. I'm starting to think that maybe Haywood Highsmith is the guy that we should move forward with in the playoffs. Not because Jaime Jaquez is bad. Jaime Jaquez was having an incredible season. An incredible season before this stuff happened. Um, but I want to throw some numbers at you guys. Give me a second. I got to get some stat lines. So... I want to throw some numbers at you guys. Sorry, Jaime Jaquez's numbers wasn't showing, so I wanted to grab them. Okay, so for the regular season, Jaime Jaquez is trouncing Haywood Highsmith. We know that. Jaime Jaquez is averaging 12 points a game, four rebounds, three assists, uh, 28 minutes a game, 48% for the field, 31% for the three-point line. It's the three-point numbers that I think are hampering Jaime. He was hitting threes earlier in the season. It's kind of dropped off. We've been seeing kind of the second-half struggles, the second-half rookie struggles for Jaime Jaquez. It happens with some players. It doesn't happen with others. First half of the season, we were clamoring for Jaime Jaquez as the rookie of the year. It's dropped off. Hey, with Highsmith's numbers, not as good for the season. Six points a game, three rebounds, one assist. 40% from the three-point line. That's the huge difference. Haywood Highsmith is the perfect 3 and D player for this team. Why? Because Jaime Jaquez is exactly Caleb Martin at this point. They're both Swiss Army Knives. It's a great thing to have. But for the other Swiss Army Knife, that's not Caleb Martin. You need that guy to be more of a 3 and D type of player. Because what does Haywood Highsmith bring? You saw it against the game against the Knicks. He helped you shut down Jalen Brunson. Haywood Highsmith's defense is on another level than Jaime Jaquez Jr. But I know I went over some numbers right now for the season, but I want to bring some other numbers to your attention, guys. The last 10 games. Because we've been noticing... Jaime's numbers have been dropping off a little bit these last 10 games. The last 10 games, Jaime Jaquez is averaging 8 points a game, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 20% from the 3-point line, 40% for the field, and his numbers have dropped from almost 30 minutes a game to 24 minutes a game. You're seeing a little drop. The last 10 games for Haywood Highsmith. Hold on to your nuts. 9.3 points, 4.2 rebounds. 
55% from the three-point line, 54% from the field in 22 minutes. He's averaging less minutes than Jaime Jaquez, but he's playing better these last 10 games. Now, if you ask me, I think there's nothing wrong with Jaime Jaquez. I just think it's second half rookie struggles. I was hoping that Jaime was going to snap out of it. You know, you have some games where he gives you a productive 10 to 15 points. You love what he does off the bench. Offensively, he's incredibly gifted. Jaime Jaquez reminds me a lot of Jimmy Butler. However, in the playoffs, you need the right fit. You need the right chemistry. The nine-man rotation we saw at the Knicks game, in my opinion, was perfect. But that's if Tyler Hero doesn't come back. You got our starting five with Caleb, Jaime, Haywood, and Kevin Love coming off the bench. You don't have a point guard, but you have a lot of players that can handle the ball. So, with this team fully healthy, my question to you, ladies and gentlemen, for the nine-man rotation, do you feel it's better to play Jaime Jaquez or Haywood Heisman? These numbers that I just gave to you guys, does it change anything? Or who's Team Hawkes? Who's Team Highsmith? I really want to hear that in the comments. Tonight, we got the game against Philadelphia. One by one, you got to get that dub. That's super important, especially since you just obtained the sixth seed. Grab a hold of that seed. Because if you get the sixth seed, Miami Heat gets one week off before the playoff starts. And that'll be huge for Tyler Hero with that rest so let me know what you think in the comments ladies and gentlemen don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel we just hit 3300 subscribers thank you guys so much for the support i love you you guys are the real mvps that is enough said stay positive heat fans